So today we're going to be taking an adventure on the high seas. On today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at the history of Grog and making a modern variation of that known as the Neptune's Wrath. I'm Andy, this is Easy Tiki Drinks, let's do this. So the term Grog actually dates back to 1749, but the story of Grog actually goes back way further than that. You see, after 1655, sailors in the British Royal Navy were given a half pint of rum as a daily ration. Now what some sailors chose to do was save up that rum, kind of save it for a one-time thing, where they would just drink all of it that they had saved. And let's just say that that didn't go very well and did not make for very productive sailors. So in 1740, Admiral Edward Vernon decided that he was gonna cut his rum rations with water at a four to one water to rum ratio. Not only that, but he split up his sailors' rations between one ration before noon and one ration after the workday was done. What this did was twofold. One, by lengthening out the rum, it dropped the ABV and made the rum spoil sooner. And what that meant was that sailors couldn't save it up. Furthermore, by splitting it out throughout the day, it was less likely that sailors were going to get drunk. So therefore, it was much more advantageous for Vernon's crew to have one smaller ration in the morning, one smaller ration in the evening, and be more productive throughout the day. Now the story continues to go on that in order to make this watered down rum actually palatable, what a lot of sailors would do is they would trade in their salt packets, which they received with their daily food rations for some sugar and lime, and add that to the watered down rum to make it actually relatively enjoyable, I guess? So that means that grog actually started as just simply rum, water, sugar, and lime. Sounds like a daiquiri to me, but who am I to argue with history? So where did the term grog actually come from? Well, it actually comes from Admiral Vernon himself. So most of his sailors did this whole like water, rum, lime, sugar concoction. Admiral Vernon was known as Old Grog because of the grogum coat he used to wear. So they named this liquid grog in honor of him. Now fast forward 200 years and you've got Don the Beachcomber who comes up with his Navy Grog, which is a blend of lime, grapefruit, honey, and a blend of three different rums. And honestly, it's not that far off from the British Grog that we just talked about. We've got our citrus, we've got our sugar, we've got our rum, and his was even lengthened out with soda water. So we've got a very, very similar format here. Now, Don called it a Navy Grog because he liked to always honor the American military. He himself was in the military, and so a lot of his cocktails were named after the military themselves, such as the QB Cooler for the Quiet Birdman. Now around the same time, you've got Victor Bergeron, who's opening Trader Vic's in Oakland, California. Now what he's doing is taking a lot of things that he saw at Don the Beachcomber and using it in his own restaurant, such as some of the cocktails, even by name, like the Navy Grog. Now Vic used the same name, the Navy Grog, but his cocktail was different. It's lime juice, grapefruit juice, allspice, and a blend of three different rums that Don didn't use. So while it's similar, it is definitely a different cocktail and kind of its own cocktail. So where does that bring us to today? Well, some would argue that the Navy Grog is one of the top three tiki cocktails, along with the Mai Tai and the Zombie. So it begs the question, who's gonna bring this into the modern era and put their own little spin on it? And that answer comes from Sergio Marath and the Neptune's Wrath. To make the Neptune's Wrath, we're gonna need lime juice, Sergio's tea mix, hot honey syrup, allspice dram, moderately aged rum, aged demerara rum, Jamaican rum, and mango soda. Now let's go over some of the ingredients and the choices that I made here. Starting with Sergio's tea mix, which honestly sounds like something out of a Resident Evil movie, but honestly it's not and it's super easy. To make Sergio's tea mix, all you're gonna do is combine two parts tangerine juice and one part cinnamon syrup. Next up, we have the hot honey syrup. I mean, hot honey is super popular nowadays, so why would we not see it in the cocktail? But again, this is actually super easy to make. So in order to make Sergio's hot honey syrup, all you're gonna do is combine five ounces of hot honey, two and a half ounces of simple syrup, a quarter ounce of absinthe, and a quarter ounce of orange blossom water. Now I did have to make some substitutions when it comes to the rums. So we have an aged Jamaican rum, an aged Demerara rum, and a moderately aged rum. For the aged Jamaican rum, Sergio originally calls for a rum bar gold, which I just don't have. So instead, I'm gonna be using my Plantation Zamaka. For the other two rums, I had to play around with the ABV and kind of swap them a little bit. So originally for the moderately aged rum, Sergio calls for a real McCoy five year. And for the aged Demerara rum, he calls for a Woods 57% ABV. Now, I don't have either of those. And I also don't have an aged Demerara rum at 57% ABV. What I do have though is a moderately aged rum in the Tiki Lovers Dark that is 57% ABV. And I'm using my Hamilton 86 for the aged Demerara rum. So I'm basically same ingredients, but swapping the ABV on those two, which is fine because they're actually the same amount in the cocktail. So we should be fine there. All right, well enough talking, let's get to mixing. So grab your shaking tin and let's go. 
In your shaking tin, you're gonna add half an ounce or 15 milliliters of lime juice. Then one ounce or 30 milliliters of Sergio's tea mix. Follow that up with half an ounce or 15 milliliters of our hot honey syrup. Next, add a quarter ounce or 7.5 milliliters of allspice dram. For our rums, we're going to add an ounce or 30 milliliters of our aged Jamaican rum. Then half an ounce or 15 milliliters of our moderately aged rum. And finally, half an ounce or 15 milliliters of our aged Demerara rum. Then we're going to add some pebble ice to our shaking tin. Then we're going to flash blend for five seconds. Grab a chilled Collins glass and open pour in. Top with more pebble ice. Top with mango soda. Garnish with a charred anise and serve with a straw. And there you have it, Sergio Marath's Neptune's Wrath. Let's give it a try. That isn't nearly as spicy as you would think it is. Even with a half ounce of hot honey syrup, that honey is coming through on the back end with a little bit of that heat. But that tangerine and cinnamon are doing a wonderful job of tempering that sweet, that, that heat in the forefront. It is a little sweet, which is going to change as you drink this cocktail. Remember, we did dilute a little bit more of it with the mango soda on the top. So as you drink this, it is gonna dilute a little bit more, but just be forewarned that up front, it is going to be a little sweet. Those rums are doing a great job of playing with each other. Honestly, Jamaican and Demerara rums are two of my favorite, and I think that honestly, they could go well together in just about any cocktail. That allspice dram is doing a wonderful job on the very, very back palate of just adding this wonderful clove and allspice note that pairs so well with the hot honey syrup. And honestly, I didn't think I would get it in this, but the absinthe that's in the hot honey syrup is coming through just a touch. So if you don't like anise, don't worry. It's not overly powerful, but it is really good. And then the star anise on top is accentuating that. So just be warned if you don't like star anise, don't use it for a garnish. Anyway, that's it for today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed going over the history of the grog and both you know, examples from our kind of tea godfathers and a modern example with a bit of a spicy kick. So thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, click that notification bell, follow me over on Instagram at Easy Tiki Drinks and TikTok actually. And that's about it. So until next time, oh, for next week's episode, we're going to be doing a classic tropical cocktail and I hope I don't get sued. So because it's um, National Dark and Stormy Day, we're going to be doing Dark and Stormies. Anyway, thanks for watching and until next time, take it easy.